What's up everybody? It's Travis here from Travis.media. Today we're going to talk about how to actually land that developer job in 2023. So most of my videos here on the channel are more focused on learning, the learning side of things, like what courses to take, how to learn to code, and tips in that regard. But a lot of people ask me, to do videos on what happens after that. So they've learned the material, how do they land that job? And I haven't really done many videos on that. So I decided to put one together for you today and I think I have some good tips for you. Now, before we get started, I know you're probably wondering, hey, Travis, there are tens of thousands of developers that have been laid off this year that are out there now looking for jobs that have way more experience than me. How am I gonna compete against those people? Like if I'm gonna to learn to code this year, I have no background, no degree. Those people have years and years of experience. How do I compete? Like now's the worst time to get into tech. That may be what you're thinking. Now, my first response to that is that being a self-taught developer in landing a job, making a career change isn't easy anyway. So whether there are thousands of people open for work or the economy's booming, it's still not easy. You still need to put in the work. You still need to have solid goals and you still need to kind of get out of your comfort zone to get there. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say, there's a lot of people that are like, has this tech bubble burst? Has this surge in tech demand now started to die down? And the answer is no, it hasn't. The problem is the reason for the layoffs is that we're in an economy that's really bad right now. We're in a bad economy. And when you're a company in a bad economy, your customer either passes on your product more often than usual, or they pick the lesser package. They purchase less things. And so you have less money coming in and you can't sustain that many employees or that many workers, and you have to let some people go. You have less money coming in, that's what I'm getting at. The issue is an economic issue, not a tech issue. If you look at the tech space now, we're growing faster than ever. Like you can't stop this tech growth. And there will always be demand for developers and software engineers and math nerds and all of those people. That's not the problem. And the second thing that's going on is a lot of these big tech companies just had this lavish budget anyway. They had free food for all their employees. They have slides and adult gyms and all of these special rooms and all of these perks just blowing money because the economy has been great. Now that the economy's bad, it's catching up with them. But here's my take on what to do. So think about it. The economy can't stay bad forever. It's going to get better. So Google just laid off 12,000 people. Let's take that as an example. They laid off 12,000 people. When the economy gets better, things start picking up, people start purchasing more product, and the upside happens again, they're gonna need those 12,000 people back. They're probably gonna need 20,000 people. And all of these other jobs are gonna need thousands of people back. So this could be a good moment of opportunity for you to learn to code. Maybe companies aren't hiring as much, though I still see lots of listings on LinkedIn and I know lots of companies still hiring. They're just not fang companies. And who wants to work at a fang company anyway? But what I'm getting at is you could take this downturn in the economy as a time to get really good at your craft. So when things do pick back up, you can be the first to nail that coding exam and land the job. You can get the job before that. I'm just saying this may be a good opportunity for that. All right, so I've totally gone down this rabbit trail. I didn't mean to go down. Let's get back to what we were talking about. So how can you actually land the job, the developer job in 2023? Well, the concepts, the steps are the same. They're always the same. And we're gonna go ahead and start with number one, which is learn the content. And you're probably like, duh, Travis, I know that. But let me talk about that for a minute. So I recently published a video. It's actually the last video that I did. It's a list of Udemy courses that I think all developers should own. And I got a lot of comments of people saying, I can't believe you would pay for this. There's all of this free stuff on the web. This guy teaches all of this stuff for free. Why would you pay for a Udemy course? Nobody should pay for a Udemy course. And I feel like when people say that, they miss the point. Because here's the truth. If you take a free course, you go on free code camp and you learn JavaScript, or if you go to Udemy, you spend 15 bucks, and you learn JavaScript. Or if you enroll in a bootcamp, you pay 15,000 and you learn JavaScript, all three paths are gonna lead to the same bucket. You're all gonna land in this bucket and you're all gonna know the same JavaScript. You wanna take free courses? Take the free courses, don't spend the money. If you wanna spend the money, spend the money. Both of you are going to learn JavaScript. There's only one syntax. So I don't care which one you take, just learn the material. And that's the differentiating factor in this whole thing is it's not the course, it's not the material, it's you. Are you gonna put in the work to learn the content? Whatever happens, you'll never land the job if you don't learn the content. So go ahead, use Free Code Camp, use Udemy, 
Use Zero to Mastery. By the way, a lot of comments in the last video were like, hey, check out Zero to Mastery. I did check it out. I like it a lot. And I'll probably do a video on it soon. Or if you want to do a boot camp, go ahead and do that. Whatever it takes, doesn't matter. Some people have to pay for stuff. Some people can do it for free. If I get something for free, I'm probably not going to value it as much. It's just the way I am. Give me something free, I might set it to the side. If I pay for it, especially if I'm doing a monthly subscription payment, I'm going to do the work because I don't want to have to keep paying that month after month. The sooner I can nail it down, the sooner I can cancel that monthly subscription. So whatever it takes, my point is here, learn the content. Number two, you have to have a portfolio. Again, you're like, duh, Travis. But there's something you gotta know here. While you're learning to code, you're gonna build these little small projects. That's fine. But at some point, you gotta come up with a more intermediate, substantial project that you've built from scratch. So you need to come up with some concept, like, hey, I'm gonna build this kind of app, and then you're gonna go out and build it without following any tutorial, and wrestling with it, and looking up the documentation, and learning all these things about a language or framework that you really didn't have to learn before. And in wrestling with that, you become really good at that language, and you end up with a project that is all yours. For example, and I did a video on this a few videos back, and I'm not gonna tell the whole story here, you can go watch that, I'll link it above, but I built this note taker app in React. I wanted to learn React better, so I thought of what can I, what can I build? And I came up with this note taker app. I think I found a, a design online somewhere. And so I took that design and I just started building. I built this note taker app. You can add notes, you can filter notes, you can do all of this stuff. It was a way bigger app than I imagined. I thought it was just a few moving parts. There were lots of moving parts and I got stuck a lot. You know, I had to dig into Redux and I had all of these little bugs that came up and I had to go into the documentation, the React documentation, and I found all this stuff out that I just didn't know. And by the time I came out of it, I felt really confident in React because I wrestled with it and I put in the time. And that would be a project that I would want to share with an employer. Not a project that I learned by watching some other tutorial, but one that I took independently from that and built myself. So your portfolio should have one or two of those projects at least. And the other gimme here is that that project is up on GitHub. Remember, you don't have a job history of programming. When somebody looks at your LinkedIn profile or your resume, they're not going to see that this guy worked as a programmer. What are they going to see? They're going to see your GitHub repo. That's about it. Until they talk to you, they're going to see that. They're going to see that you've been active, that you've been building things, and then they may like that and then want to talk to you. So again, have a portfolio, but make sure you have one or two substantial projects that you built from scratch on your own that you're able to explain. Now, number three, there is going to be a coding interview slash exam, and you will have to know algorithms. You can't get by this. I'm not good at it. I hate coding exams when I have to sit there in front of somebody and code. And the only way you can really do good is if you prep for it. So get some kind of algorithm course, get some kind of course that teaches you how to pass the coding interview, how to do well at the coding interview. If you're going in like C sharp, make sure you know C sharp good. Make sure you've done a lot of algorithms in C sharp. Almost all companies will ask you to do a coding exam in front of someone whether it be the lead developer or the CTO or the manager or whatever, you're gonna have to do that. And that's scary. A lot of people landing the job, they think ahead to this and they say, I can never do that. I'm not even gonna go down this path. You'll be fine once you learn the content and you want that job bad enough. If you prep for it, you do some coding interview courses, you do your homework, you practice, you'll be ready for it. You'll still be nervous. You'll never get over that, but you'll be better at it if you prepare. So you've learned the content, you got a good portfolio, and you're ready for that coding interview and exam. Number four, and the final thing I wanna talk about is the job search itself. Now the job search, it's a numbers game. It's how many resumes you can send out in hopes that somebody is gonna call you in for an interview. That's the whole goal. The goal is to have someone say, hey, let's talk to him. You're gonna have lots and lots of people that won't even give you the time of day because you don't have that background. And if you do have a computer science degree, you're like right out of college, you'll probably have an easier time. But if you're self-taught, you don't have that background to prove. So it's going to be, again, a numbers game. So here's what you want to do. You wanna to go to LinkedIn. And I know a lot of people like don't like LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the best. It's the best. It's basically your resume out there in the public 
being crawled over by tons of recruiters. It's really an amazing place. So create a good profile, have a professional picture, have all of your skills listed in your description. You got your past jobs. You might have some certifications. You might have some assessments that you've passed on LinkedIn to show, and you may have people that endorse your skills also, but have a good solid LinkedIn profile. And most importantly, make sure you're open to recruiters like you I forgot what setting it is. I'll put it on the screen here, but you can open yourself up to recruiters like, hey, I'm looking for work and I'm looking in these categories, these languages or technologies. And when you do that, recruiters can find you. Now, there's a lot of people that hate recruiters. We have a love hate relationship with recruiters. I don't see the big problem. There are people looking for you. They want to connect you to an employer so that if you get the job, they get a big bonus. Like they have a big incentive to get you in that interview seat. Your main goal is to get in the interview seat. So I don't see the big problem. I love recruiters. And if you set yourself open to work, recruiters can search by location. They can search by skill level. They can search by school you went to. And they're just as desperate as you to find people. They're desperate to find you. That's the truth because they get big bonuses when you get the job. So you've learned the content. You've prepped for this interview. You're ready. They're going to get you in the interview seat. You two should be best buddies. So again, the main goal here is to get the interview. It's a big numbers game. You just need to get in that interview seat and prove your skills. Also in this stage, you're gonna have to have thick skin. A lot of people are gonna reject you. Sometimes you're gonna get to like to the last round, people are gonna reject you and you just gotta shrug it off and keep sending out resumes. Now, one quick tip that I can give to those thinking about going the freelance route or those just looking for work in the meantime to get their feet wet or to add to their resume is to reach out to local web agencies in your area. This is what I did when I first started coding and I was looking for work. I reached out to some web agencies in my area and this one web agency contacted me back. Now the thing with web agencies is they often have too much work to handle. So they have lots of work coming in and they have to turn work away. And the work they turn away is often work that doesn't pay over a certain threshold. So this company that contacted me, they didn't do any work for clients under $10,000. They didn't have the capacity to do it. So I sent an email and said, Hey, my name's Travis. I'm a web developer in the area. Was just wondering if you guys had overflow work. Like, is there too much work coming in and that you're not able to do? If so, maybe you can send me some of it. And of course you can take your cut from it. So if you, if I charge 50 an hour and you charge them 75 an hour, you're going to make money. And they said, Hey, let's do it. They sent me a couple clients. They sent me a couple jobs to do. And we had this steady relationship for months. That could be an option as well. Find web agencies that can benefit from you taking their overflow work. And that's the job search. That's really the four steps today. Number one, learn the content. Number two, have a solid portfolio with some original items in it. Number three, prep for that coding interview, practice your algorithms. And then number four, the job search. It's a numbers game. Apply to lots of jobs with the goal being to get into that interview seat because you're ready technically to do it. And that's all I have today. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comments. If you found this helpful in any way, thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.